Revelation chapter 12 has quickly become one of my favorite chapters in all of Scripture. The devil attacking God, the devil attacking the church. As we just recently were looking at the nativity scenes in our homes, this is one that's missing. As Revelation chapter 12 puts a dragon there. I mean, go ahead, put a dragon in your Christmas scene in the years to come. The dragon is waiting as the child is born. So the woman is giving birth and the dragon is there with its mouth open, just waiting. Not the doctor's hands, not a midwife's hands, but the the dragon waiting with jaws open to clench, to crush the child to be born to save us. The devil seeking to undo God's plan of salvation, seeking to kill God himself. And on Good Friday, the devil thought he had. The devil thought that he had won. He put Jesus to death. But what he thought was his victory turned out to be his undoing. Why? Because what the devil has, the devil's power against you and against me, is our sin. It's our guilt. The devil is the accuser. He takes your sin and he holds it over your head and says, God can't forgive you for this. And he goes before the Father and he says, look at what this one has done. You can't forgive that. But by Christ's death on the cross, by his blood shed for us, Jesus has. Jesus has forgiven every sin of all time. Your sins and mine and the person on the other side of the world we've never met, the person who lived 2,000 years ago, the person who may yet live in the future. Every sin of every time. The devil has no more power over us. His victory became his defeat. In the text of Revelation 12, God then snatches up the child safely to his throne in heaven. It's a reference to the ascension of Jesus. So the devil, recognizing he can't kill God, goes after what God loves, which is consolation price, almost as good. He goes after the church. He shouldn't have. He should have realized better. The devil knows God's word. And in God's word, Matthew chapter 16, Jesus says, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Eventually, the devil realizes the error of that way and instead goes after the children of the woman. The woman, again, the church. Mary's a part of the church, but the woman is the church. So the devil goes after children of the church. That would be you and me. It would be individual Christians. As First Peter says, that he is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. First Peter 5. He's looking to devour us. He waits for the straggler to fall away, and then he snatches at them, grabs at them. But the Lord provides. The Lord provided for the church to rescue her from the devil's clutches, and the Lord provides for you. He provides for you through word and sacrament, forgiving those sins that the devil would pounce upon and strengthening you to go another day. That power, that strength comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, And the devil no longer has any power over us because he has been undone. Thanks be to God.